Okay, and while the next speaker is preparing, the next talk is by Yaakov Elo, Alon Oring, and Zohar Yachini. The title of the talk is Shaping the Latent Space for Data Interpolation. Okay, so uh, good morning. Uh, I will talk about shaping latent space for uh, data interpolation. This is a joint work with Alon Oring, uh, Zohar Yachini, uh, and myself, we are all uh, at IDC. And before uh, I start, I would like to show you a demo. Um, this, is, uh, this is a real object scanned by Google. I work on this uh, project during my uh, previous sabbatical. And it's quite amazing. It's a real object you can scan, you can zoom in, you can rotate, and so forth. Uh, and this enable interactive rendering, OK? In order to be able to do such uh, interacting, uh, interactive labeling, you have to do 3D scanning uh, to reconstruct the mesh, uh, to do mesh correction, to fix some uh, holes or do uh, some denoising, to acquire the texture of the object, to do texture to mesh registration, uh, to acquire some photometric property of the object and so forth, and then you build a graphical model. This is very, very complicated to acquire. But this is a traditional modeling that we are doing today. We just take an object, we scan it, we build a geometric uh, model, and then we apply, can apply uh, interactive rendering. The question whether in the future we'll be able everything automatically, meaning that we scan an object, put it, everything, all the images into some deep neural network and then automatically we have the model, the structure, the geometry of the object and then we will, we will be able to do interactive uh, rendering. Uh, so I'm not going to show you a solution for this uh, problem today, but maybe one step uh, toward this goal. So we all know that uh, real world data like images our points can be seen as points in high dimensional space, but they occupy very small or tiny fraction in this high dimensional space, which we call manifold. Interactive rendering can be seen as surfing on that manifold. Uh, in order to extract or to learn about this manifold, people use autoencoder in order to understand the manifold of this set of images. So for those who are not familiar with the autoencoder, autoencoder is uh, composed of two parts, the encoder that take an input X, in this example, an image, and uh, map it into uh, some representation space Z in this case, and then the decoder that take the representation Z and uh, do the decoding and extract the same image. This is a unsupervised scheme. A Z is called the latent space. This is a representation, probably be, uh, because we have um, uh, a bottleneck uh, a network, this, is, this representation is of dimensionality much lower than the original dimension of the image, for example. In order to train this uh, network, what we apply, we apply uh, loss measure between the original X and the reconstructed X, and in order, while minimizing this uh, uh, loss, we uh, train the encoder and the decoder, and the decoder, and then we have a representation space. Now, the good thing about this latent space, that in order to uh, compress the data, the encoder must learn the structure or ge geometry or the, or, the, or the correlation in the data set. So uh, people apply some manipulation in this latent space. For example, in this example, they apply some constraint in the latent space. Or people in, in the left image, you can see people, uh, this is a just wandering in the latent space, uh, representing the MNIST data. Uh, and people also do some arithmetic in latent space. For example, if you take uh, a man with glass, you subtract uh, a man without glass and you add it to a woman, so what you get is a woman with glass. So you just, you, you really can do some arithmetic in, in the latent space. But uh, let's uh, take a closer look at the latent space. Typically, 
we have two types of data set. We have data set coming or drawn from multimodal distribution. This is like multi-class object, MNIST, and so forth. And we have samples drawn from manifold structure. In our example, over, uh, for example, object under varying, varying viewing parameter, this is uh, more like a manifold structure, and we have sampled in this manifold. We argue that applying statistical tools to manifold samples fails to fully expose the structure or the correlation in the data structure, and one, one must consider the geometry of this manifold in order to apply a reliable inference in the latent space. So toward this goal, we take a very simple a toy problem, which is very naive and simple, which is shadow interpolation. The story is the following. We have <coughs> a plane with one pole on the plane, and we have a light source parameterized by theta phi, two degree of freedom, and we have a camera, okay? And what we would like to do is just to interpolate between two images, uh, between two uh, shadow images, okay? So what you see here, you have, uh, on the left you see a source image, on the right you see the target image, and in the middle you see interpolation, animation of the interpolation, between the source and the target image when we apply the interpolation in the image space, in the intensity. So what we see here is just cross dissolve between the intensities of the pixel, and of course this is not the result that we would like to do. And the question whether the autoencoder can extract the structure or the geometry of the, of the situation that can apply the interpolation in a reliable manner. So what we do, we just take a set of images in this case, in this example, and we train autoencoder. On the left, we have the input. On the, lie, on the right, we have the output. And we uh, map, we find the mapping from the input into the latent space. And then we apply the interpolation in the, in the latent space, where the interpolation in the latent space is just a linear in interpolation between the source target and the, uh, the source image and the target image. So this is the result what we, what, uh, we get. So on the, uh, on the top image, you see, uh, like before, the image, the interpolation in the image space, and in the top image, you see in the latent space. So it's much better, it's nice, it's good, but you see a lot of artifact, and the question, why do we get this artifact? And this is another, a, a more result, when uh, the latent dimension, the latent dimension in this case is just two, and several possible of autoencoders. So, <clears throat> in order to investigate the source of this uh, artifact, I would like to show you, to present, the manifold in the latent space. Since we have only 2D manifold, because we have only two parameters, we can look at this manifold and investigate what is the source of this uh, uh, artifact. So, this is a 2D manifold embedded, in this case, in three-dimensional latent space. This is what you get, okay? And if we apply the same, but we apply into two-dimensional latent space, this is what, you, what we get, and you see that the manifold actually is folded into this two-dimensional space. Um, now when you apply the interpolation, what you get, you get of out-of-manifold phenomena. As you see here, when you interpolate between two points in the latent space, Sometimes the point is deviate or going out of the manifold, and when the point is outside of the manifold, the result or the reconstruction is unpredictable, and therefore we get all these artifacts. And this is another example, okay, of the interpolation in the uh, latent space and the result uh, in the right. So previous attempt to solve this uh, problem, actually they are not, uh, we didn't find a precisely a approach uh, that dealing with this uh, problem. Maybe only the third, the variational, variational autoencoder, which became very popular in the last years, but the variational autoencoder is uh, more appropriate, appropriate for the multimodal uh, uh, case, but it's not appropriate for manifolds. Uh, so what we would like to do is to shaping the latent space so that the interpolation will be reliable. And the approach we are taking is the following. We assume we have a set of triplets of points where the triplets are collinear in the parameter space. So for example, we have X of PS, this is a source image. We have X of PT, 
which is a target image, and we have X of P alpha, which is a linear combination between the PS and PT. So this is a linear in the parameter space. Now, if we take these three images and we map them into the latent space, we get ZS, ZT, and Z alpha. And we see here the, those points are not collinear. So what we would like to do to make this point collinear in the latent space, and therefore, and we do it for many, many triplets, okay? And then we get a, a, a representation, latent space, what will be more reliable for interpolation. In order to do so, we apply it using triplet autoencoder. We have a triplet autoencoder. Each one of them get an image, PS, PT, and P alpha. And we have two types of losses. One loss is for the reconstruction, the typical reconstruction loss of autoencoder. But the second one is a collinearity loss that enforce the three point, the representation of the three point to be collinear in the latent space. So I show you results. This is a simulation of uh, applying the epoch uh, of uh, the latent space, and you see the space is becoming more flattening. I mean, in 2D, it's, it's a flat a, 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 a manifold, but in a higher dimensional space, it's just a convex manifold. And when you apply the interpolation in this space, you see that the result is much better. Um, on the top image, you see interpolation along the latitude, and the bottom image, you see uh, interpolation along the longitude, and you see the interpolation without any artifact, everything is perfect. Uh, this is just between any arbitrary point in the latent space, you see the results. Uh, here you see comparison, this is the image space, and here you see in the latent space, this is regular standard autoencoder, and this is a triplet autoencoder, you see the difference. Um, just to show you a accuracy measure, this is uh, with a standard uh, typical various autoencoder, but when we apply the triplet autoencoder, this is what we get. Uh, what is interesting to see here that if we apply autoencoder, triplet autoencoder in two-dimensional space, meaning in the intrinsic dimensionality of the manifold, the results are much better rather than if we apply it in three, for example, three-dimensional space. So to conclude, um, what we claim that uh, manifold data interpolation should consider the manifold geometry and it's not enough to just apply statistical tools. A manifold flattening and we saw improved data interpolation and it's beneficial to uh, take the dimensionality of the manifold to be the intrinsic dimension of the, of the manifold. Uh, that's it, thank you if you have questions. It's nice, um, but in general, you cannot flatten the manifold because of curvature. And if you take a sphere, for example, topology, <coughs> so what do you do? Uh, okay, this is the third. This is this is the third point here. A very good uh, question. Basically, uh, indeed, if you have a cyclic parameterization, you cannot apply. You cannot f find a flat manifold. What you have to do is to cut your domain into pieces. This is what we did. Why do you have a distinction between multimodal distribution and manifold? Can't you have the manifold as a higher dimensional multimodal distribution? No, because, uh, because when you have a multimodal, for example, like in a variational autoencoder, you uh, enforce the data to conform the, the Gaussian distribution in the latent space. This is not possible in manifold, because in manifold you have a flat sheet and you cannot enforce something like that. Uh, also, in multi-modal distribution, you would like that the gap between the the, the, uh, the classes to to have some nice interpolation, which is not the case in in manifold. Okay. Okay. Let's thank the speaker. <laughs>